Good morning, everyone. As always, we're supposed to do, place your cross on first. If you are a follower of Christ, put your arm on early in the morning. You understand? God says, see, the Bible talks about God going before you. He can't go before you if you put him behind. He's supposed to be first in your life, numero uno. Not your kids, not your wife, not your husband, not your mama, not your daddy, not your auntie or anything like that. God first. You know why? Because no matter what path you go through, he's going to be there to be with you. If you seek him first early in the morning. One of the Psalms talked about rising early and seeking God. As always, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right. Another chance to spread your word and minister to your children and even minister to myself. Lord Jesus, use me as you seem fit to bring forth whatever it is you want me to bring forth out of all truth and honesty and wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, there's a lot of evils going on in the world. I talked, I posted something yesterday about hate breeds hate, evil brings evil, and this and that. You know, if you read your Bible, people, if you read your Bible, you read Revelation, you already know this world is going to get worse and worse. That's why I made a long little talk this morning before I said about putting your armor on first. Putting God before you. You understand? So he'll protect you. You see, in this world, a lot of people ain't living for God. That's why a lot of evil is happening in the world. The less God comes into the situation, the more evil come, breeds. You got people who are evil in the police force. You got people who are not followers of Christ in the police force. On the outside, unruly. Nobody's people putting God on the back burner. That's the whole reason a lot of this evil is going on in the world. It's not about race. It's about the spiritual energy that the world is giving off from evil. You see, they didn't let the demons take control. And, and they gave the control to the demons and to the evil spirits in the spiritual realm. By turning their back on God and by hating and by doing anything that's against God's will. You understand? That's why the world is getting bad as it is. Can you make any changes? I told you before, the Bible told you, who can make straight what God has made crooked? That means they got to come to God to be straightened out. You know, everybody like, what are you doing about it? I can't do nothing about it. I can tell people to seek God and get their heart right. As far as trying to dispute about this or join in on the bad wagon of the hate that's being fueled out there, that's not my job as a Christian. That's not my job as a follower of Christ. My job as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, is to lead people to Christ, not to evil debates, not to evil this and evil that, to lead people to Jesus. You understand? I'm going to tell you something about putting your arm on. It protects you. Am I saying you're not going to go through no battles? You know, one of my uh, brothers in Christ, Brother Wall, he's on my page. He makes music for the Lord. He talked about the armor. I mean, he talked about no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The weapon may be formed. You ain't even you be hit with a few whips. You understand? But it won't prosper. You see, as a Christian, you might even go upon evil people. But it won't prosper in regards to you. Now look at it from a spiritual perspective The Bible says Don't be swift to run to evil Right You see I'm going to tell you something Everybody wants you to do something about it right But what do people do When they see injustice They run to it because they know it First of all they are busy about it They like to see anything To stir up the people And then when they get there they just film You understand they just film if you read the parable, I mean, read the story about Jesus stepping himself out on a limb for the woman caught in the act of adultery that was being stoned, and God sustained him, and God helped him, and God gave him the words to say, to persuade, to change the minds of the people. Now, what people want to do, they just want to look. Oh, that's messed up, child. Look at what they're doing. What are you doing? 
You understand? I'm, I wasn't there. You understand? God's going to hold them accountable. The people who are there and the people who did it. He's going to hold them accountable. There's nothing you can do from the outside. You understand? That's why in your life, God puts you in places when you put him first for you to right, make the right choice and make the right decision. Just like Jesus stepped in for the woman caught in the act of adultery to stop her from being stoned, to stop her from being killed, to stop that knee from being placed on that man's neck. But as you can see, nobody stepped in. They just talked, but they wasn't using right talk. You see, you gotta understand people, words are powerful when you trust in God. You understand? Words are. Being an innocent bystander sometimes is just like being part of the evil yourself. And there was another video somebody posted about people raiding Target, stealing, stealing, stealing. And one guy was like, this is what happens, man. These people are tired. If they're so tired, why are they turning to God? Why are they taking matters in their own hands? God says vengeance belongs to him. You think because one hateful act makes you want to go steal? If anybody remember the Watts riot, it was a hateful act. What was the man's name? I can't even remember his name. Rodney King. Rodney King was violated by the police, beat bad, beat brutally by the police. And the people got into an uproar. And they started destroying their own neighborhoods and looting their own neighborhoods because of the injustice. They took matters in their own hands. But in reality, do the math. The people who went in there and stole been wanting to steal. The people who started beating people up been wanting to beat people up. The people who want to turn about, talk about race and hatred, they been hateful. It ain't just come upon them. They've been born to do these lawless acts. They're just using an excuse to justify their actions. You understand? You see, the Bible talks about when they revel, you revel not back. You understand? When they offer you, when they smite you on the left cheek, offer them the right cheek. If you read your Bible, people, it's going to tell you a lot of things to keep you safe and keep you unspotted from the world. You understand? It's ways to do things. But the thing is, that's where your light comes in. That's why he says, we are the church. I don't watch all these videos about all this hateful stuff going on, but God is not in any of them. Now, people are gonna take that and run with it. But you just gotta understand what I'm saying when I say God is not in them. God is not in any, any of those people. You understand? You don't hear God's words coming out. You see them a worldly stuff coming out. They doing this to us. We need to take take over. Even the people that violating the curfew abide by the laws of the land. Like I don't wear a mask because they have not made it official that everybody in Alabama has to wear a mask. So I don't wear one. But if they say, hey, you gotta wear a mask in order to go to the store, I'm gonna put one on. But you know what people do? Oh, I'm finna go in here without a mask. And cause all kind of craziness. Or somebody gonna be like, I wanna sit here. And then somebody gonna be like, you can't sit there, that place is off limits. Then they'll get up and cough in somebody's face. You see, people don't wanna listen at all. Then they get mad for getting in trouble, for violating the rules. The law is in a place for a reason, people. You abide by the law to keep in respect, out of respect for God. You abide by the law to keep in respect for God. It's about God. It's not about the people. It's about doing what God wants you to do. You see, people focus on what man does. But God wants you to be a good person for him. He wants you to abide by the law for him. You understand? So, if you hate Christ, if you claim you're a Christian, and you don't abide by the law of the land, you ain't, you hate Christ. You see, what the what shows that you are a Christian is by living by the word of God. You can't say you're a Christian and break the law. I'm talking about the law of the land. You can't. It doesn't work that way. Jesus said, render to Caesar 
what is Caesar's, and to God, what is God's. Read your Bibles, people. A lot of this stuff wouldn't even be going on if people read their Bible and walked. But back to what I was saying, God was not in the situation. Why? Because we are the church. God dwells in us. If God is in more in us, a lot of stuff that you see going on would not happen. If the spirit of the Lord was really inside of a lot of people, a lot of the evil that you see happening in this world wouldn't happen. It's not God's fault. It's people's fault for not seeking God early in the morning. It's people's fault for not reading his word. It's people's fault for not acknowledging him. It's people's fault for not seeking his wisdom that he gave for everybody freely. No, because people are blending God's word with worldly teachings. And it's tearing the word apart. In return, the world is being torn apart because of all the deceitfulness that's going on inside the world. Preachers ain't preaching right. Preachers get up there and preach hate. You understand? You know, somebody posted something the other day. was like, if you go to a... Now watch this. I'm going to tell you how cunning the enemy is. If you go to a church and they see all this social injustice going on in here. And it's a white evangelical preacher. Now watch how the, watch how the, the devil snuck in. When it's a white evangelical preacher up there and he's not talking about the injustice that's going on. You need to step in and do something about it. Now, as a Christian, the first thing you're going to say, you're going to be like, well, that's, that sounds correct. He should be saying something about that. But God say, touch not my anointed. Right? You got to be careful when you go to that man of God. Maybe God don't want him to talk about it. Maybe God wants you him to talk about him. And get people closer to him and not breed hate. That's hate. You see, that's racism right there. People don't even see it. She said, if you got a white preacher. So that means the black people need to do something about that white preacher. That's hate. You see, discernment people. I don't care if the person who posted it read this video. They might need to know or listen to this video. They might need to know the truth. Hate brings hate, people. We ain't designed to go to the church to make people hate one another. We designed to go to the church to make people love one another. To encourage love and encourage, treat your brother and your sisters how they want to be treated. Treat them in the word, according to the word of the Lord. I had to sit, throw that part in there because some people want to be treated evil. I can't use the treat people how they want to be treated because some people like to be treated rough no treated according to how the word of God is do you understand people it's up to you as a Christian it's your God given right as a follower of Christ to seek peace with all not destruction tears in the wheat sow in the seed He's first stage, first stage, they hear the word, the devil takes it away. The second stage, they hear the word, and then when trials and tribulation and persecution arise, they err concerning the faith. What's going on right now? Persecution is going on in the world. Now those supposed Christians are turning hateful. The second stage. I can go back to every scripture and relate it to the, the soul and the seed. God said, if you can't understand this parable, how we understand all parables? Second stage. Christians are turning back to the second stage of the sower and the seed. The word is falling on the rocks. Or, uh, I can't remember, the rocks are, are on the wayside. Eat all. You understand? Do the math, people. See the truth. It's up to you to open your eyes as a Christian. You understand? It's up to you to open your eyes as a follower of Christ. I'm tired of these false Christians up here spreading hate. Tell these false Christians up there spreading destruction. All you're going to do is bring upon yourself swift destruction. That's why God said, be careful of those who teach. If you call yourself a Christian and you're teaching people the error, you're going to bring upon yourself swift destruction. Then you're going to be looking like, God, i done what you asked me to do. No, you didn't. You did what you wanted to do. You're spreading what you want to spread. You're spreading the deceitfulness that you want to spread. You're spreading the hate that you want to spread. That's not God. You understand? 
That's not God. People always say, where is God? But let me tell you again. Where are the men and women of God? Where are the true followers of Christ at? What are they doing about this? Are they spreading the word correctly? Where are they? Where are they? They're not there. People live by the word. They bless. They profess to know me with their mouth. But their heart is far from me. But their heart is far from me. They are liars. That's what the Bible says. He said no liar will inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you are spreading lies, who's your father? If you're spreading deceit, who's your father? If you're spreading hate, who's your father? It's the devil. I don't care if you call yourself a Christian. You ain't following my God. You ain't following my Jesus. You're following something else. If you can't see that through your own eyes, ask God to open your eyes so you can look in the mirror and fix the wrongs in yourself. People sit around and gossip about these wrongdoings and they just get hateful. They get hateful. Bring God into the situation. Do you hear me? Bring God into the situation. You want to bring change in the world? Bring God in the situation. But we're at a stage in this world where God is dividing the harvest. He's dividing the harvest. He's going to let the evil and the good grow together. He's going to let the good grain and the bad grain grow together. But when he come back, he's going to take all that good grain. He's going to take all that good grain and store it. He's going to take all that bad grain and cast it into the fire. Make sure you are not the bad grain. Make sure that you're not being cast into the fire with all the evil and they'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. Make sure you're the good grain. Make sure you're not a tear in the wheat. Make sure you're sowing good seed. He said if it's a little darkness mixed with that light, how great is that darkness? You can't serve two masters. You know, people be talking about the Bible. He said they're going to be few who find the truth. People think heaven is going to be overflowing with millions and billions of people. I beg to differ. You know why? Because the word says it's going to be few. He said many are called, few are chosen. Many are called and few are chosen. You got to think about it. I'm going to tell you what Jesus, what happened when Jesus fed the men with the fish. The children and everybody. He had a thousand people. He started getting a lot of disciples after that. But when Jesus started spreading them the truth about peace and that my kingdom is not about money, it's not about none of those things, thousands left out following Christ. He was left with 12 and one of them was a devil. So he was left with 11. A thousand out of 11. Do the math. What's that, 11%? Wait, 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 that's less than that. A th 11 out of 1,000. What's the percentage on that? That's a low percentage. That's a low percentage. It's like 0 .04 something, I don't know. But it's a low percentage. Let's just say, okay, let's say 1,000. Let's say 1,100 and, and, and uh, I mean 11, yeah, 1,100 and 110 turn to God. Right there, that's just 10%. So think about what 11 is. Not even near. Let's go back to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. When Judge Lot vexed his soul every day living with unlawless people. That means he wasn't a part of it. He just stayed there. Same with this world. You just live here. You're not a part of it. And he vexed his soul daily living among this lawless land called Sodom and Gomorrah but he did not take part in the evil that was going on in the city and God sent angels to save just Lot and his family and even then let's think about it before that happened Abraham was like hey 
the Lord visited Abraham and be like, hey, I'm going to smite Egypt with fire. He was like, uh, don't do it. What if it's a hundred just people? I'm just, just know the word. I might not be exact accurate, but I'm not adding to it. Just know the story. What if it's a hundred people then? Well, the Lord said, if it's a hundred people, I will not destroy it. He said, wait, 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 wait. What if it's 50? If it's 50, I won't destroy it. Wait, 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 wait. What if it was 30? So on and so on. He got down to what if it's 10, I think, just people. If it was 10 just people in that city, I would not destroy it. Guess what happened to the city? It was destroyed. It wasn't even 10 just people in that city. It was one out of the 99. It was one. One percent. One percent was saved. His children were saved because of, his two daughters were saved because of Lot. His wife would have been saved too. But as you can see, her evil heart caused her to turn back to the world too. One percent. Tau. That's what I'm going to say. Probably less than that. One man was saved from that city. So think about this world when God comes back to the harvest. How many of you really truly think it's going to be the people that live for him and do as we are all honesty and all truth? The rest are going to be cast to the side. They will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. Lord, Lord, haven't I done this and that in my name? Get away from me, you worker of iniquity. You understand? You're trying to keep yourself spotless from the world. You're not trying to be out there in those gatherings and those hate groups and this and that. All you're doing is sealing your fate. By going out there and being a part of the lawlessness that's going on in the world. I tell people something. Home first, man. Mind your own business. I told you, as a Christian, God's going to send people to you. Or you're going to be meeting people around your route. You ain't got to go above and beyond to follow Christ. You know what? You're trying to make yourself something. When you go out there and mind other people's business. Take Al Sharpton. I'm going to use him for example. He been silent a lot lately. He normally run his mouth in regards to stuff like that. You don't see him running his mouth about Jesus no time or injustice no time until some evil happens. Then he want to step into the forefront and swear he want to bring change. Where were you all the time? Reverend L. Sharpton. You understand? You got to think about people, man. Think about it. Some people are swift to run to evil. <laughs> What did I just say? Some people are swift to run to evil. A Christian don't run towards evil. You understand? Don't run towards evil. <laughs> Do the math, people. A lot of people ain't gonna make it. I pray to God that I make it. I don't even know if I am, but I pray to God that I make it. And I pray that a lot of people make it. But I'm seeing how the world is operating. Not many are gonna make it to heaven. You understand? There will be a lot of weeping. They show the rapture. And they should always show so many people being lifted up. It might be so many people. It might be just enough people. People don't even realize what happened. It might happen so quick. And it might be so few of a number. That people don't even realize. They'll be like, wow. What if they just give up the ghost? You understand? What if they just die from a natural cause? When Jesus returns. You understand? But I don't, I don't see it like the movies see it. I don't see it like that. You understand? I see it like the Bible says it. You understand? The dead in Christ shall rise first. You understand? And it's going to be a small percentage. When God, when, when God flooded the earth the first time, who did he say? Noah. The Bible is about a lot of numbers and code. If you pay attention. Seven is a good number. Forty. You understand? It's just you got to pay attention to certain things, people. You know, I'm not telling you to dwell in it, but when God shows you, he'll show you. But I love y'all, man. Y'all just be careful out there. Don't be in a lot of parts of these things that's going on in this world. Step back. Like I said, home first. Take care of your home. You know, don't be caught slipping out there in the wrong place at the wrong time. There was a guy out there in one video they showed. The police were doing some injustice things. 
And the one guy, he walked towards it and started voicing his opinion, not in a godly way, in an unruly manner. They said, you know, he get punched in the mouth. Am I saying the cop was wrong? No, I'm saying both were wrong. It's how you do things. Righteous judgment. You understand? It's ways to do things, people. Learn from that Bible. You can't come at people when anger and tension is around with an attitude. Like you're about to do something. Am I saying the cop was right? No, the cop need to execute his righteous judgment too. But like I said, all cops ain't good. Most cops who do this, they was already hateful. You know what I'm saying? If all put people look, people love to say, well, why those good cops ain't speaking up for the bad cops, speaking against the bad cops? Because they minding their own business. Chris Rock. Don't throw that worldly knowledge out here, think you smart. I would slam you with that. You understand? Because where you at? Chris? Minding your own business like you're supposed to? Makes sense. You understand? A lot of things that don't concern you. Don't worry about it. He said, don't even worry about what's going on in somebody else's house. Don't worry about it. It don't concern you. God's going to set up whoever he wants in your life for you to reach. That one out of the 99. You ain't got to worry about trying to save the world. That's what Jesus died on the cross for. It's up to them to save themselves through Jesus. Think on it. Meditate on it. Let it soak in. Use your discernment. Have a blessed day, people.